Hi, I'm Amanda. <laughs> I'm pregnant. I'm so pregnant. More pregnant than I think I am, I think. And I'm living out here with my husband and my two-year-old son with the... The dog. The dog. I was going to say no running water and no electricity, except for we have solar panels. And technically the spring is running, so... Uh, but we're definitely off the road, so I think that counts as off the grid. This is the new porch. The new porch it's is... glorious. I love it. We can hang out here and not get wet in the rain. The fall rain is coming, so it's like a place that Kai and I can go. I can put him out here when he's screaming, which is excellent. The house is pretty small when he has meetings. You know, he's working online. So it's, like a, it's like a whole extra room to the house now. And I built it for, to be fairly grandiose. Um, mm. I wanted to make a statement. <laughs> this is your statement piece. <laughs> I, th I think the door is your statement piece. We worked. This is what we've worked the hardest on. Yeah, this is new. This is fancy. It has a latch on it. Love that sound. So this house was basically built by one person. Normally, you get a team of people and you place sill logs and you stack them up. But the stockading here. That's the logs that run up and down, make it possible for one person to kind of do this on their own. So it's a pretty unique style. You won't see cabins like this. Yeah, most um, log cabins have the, the horizontal, horizontal logs. Horizontal logs. So it's special, but it comes with its own set of um, issues. It Every single its, thing has, has a story. story. Right, so this is, this is the just-in-case shit, right? It's <laughs> like insurance. This is the artifact of having a two-year-old in the woods. So yeah. uh, that's Kai's chariot back and forth two hours each way. I climbed Denali the first time in 2001 with these snowshoes that are probably 50 years old and we were the retro guys. Every time we would get into camp they'd be like you guys are the retro guys. I was with with Rick, you know, my stepdad. So we had these bunny boot crampons and these snowshoes and and bunny boots which are which are total old school gear, right? Everybody's they're got Korean now. Korean War vintage yeah. army surplus. Which they're the best though. It, it was exactly the right thing to climb the mountain in 1976 and we climbed in 2001 and <laughs> had all the same gear and like literally the, like we were known up and down the mountains like you guys are the retro guys. It's like no we're the gear guys do. We're the guys that can't afford the plastic boots. So that's the shrine to the days of yore. Because we don't see family that often, we keep, you know, for my son, like, all the aunties and the grandmas and the grandpas, and we've got all the regular kid stuff books. And, but then we also have special stuff, the lead star that we have to keep up really high now that we have a two-year-old around. That's, but, that is hilarious. So, so my brother, grew up out here. Yeah, my brother and I had a, a stump where we would, we would put targets and we'd do 22 practice yeah shoot, shoot, shoot 22s for like hours and hours and hours and hours and hours to the point where you could go in with a pocket knife and dig out bullets except they weren't bullets they were like a bullet amalgams because there was just like the stump itself was basically lead so we dug up all of the old lead bullets and and rick cut a form into a piece of wood and we poured a lead i know you guys are... yeah so this will this will make you talk funny but it's cool it is. All the stuff. Every, everything has a story. Everything you know? ha like that. Everything. Every single thing. Like this picture, you know. From 1982. From 1982, yeah. And it's been hanging there since 1982, right? Like, I don't know what's behind there. There could be holes that, you know, mice come in. And Guys' toys, up. although half of those toys are my toys. That's a cool thing. I mean, I feel like you don't really get that anymore. You know, people growing up in the same house that, or having, you know, having your kids in the same house that you grew up in. These are literally, this is Uncle Forrest's chainsaw. Uncle Forrest got this when he was five years old, 22 years ago. And now, <laughs> now Kai thinks it's the coolest thing in the world and runs around and helps me, you know, build a little cabin with his toy chainsaw. So yeah, Kai's toys. Yeah, Kai's toys. Yeah, all of this stuff is pretty Yeah, that's, that's Uncle Forrest. Yeah, all this stuff is pretty old. Like Duplos, the original Duplo bunny. That's pretty sweet. Original micro machines. They're pretty cool. Yeah. This is my domain. Sometimes, you know, it feels like they live here. Yeah. Right here, specifically. Um, we cook all of our meals here. There's no takeout. No one's to deliver us pizza. Oh, I wish they would. It would be really awesome. It's so Amazon someday with the drones. Yes, everybody keeps asking about the Amazon drone delivery service, and I'm all about that. I support that program. <laughs> I mean, when we get, even when we get into town, it's, you know, if we're like on a mission, we're going to the grocery store because it's a, you know, it's a two-hour hike out and then back. So you've got four hours of just the trail. Then it's another two hours down to town and back. So that's another four hours. So it's an eight-hour round trip before you even do anything. So Basically, everything is a mission, right? <laughs> so it's like, 
it's very rare that you have the time, to be, time. to be not on a mission. Basically, you're begging borrowing time from a friend, it's like, can you watch my kid and then can I also please stay overnight on your couch? Except for now we have a kid, so it's not a couch, do you have a spare bedroom that we can use? You know, um, that's a, a, something that's, we do have friends in town, they do let us do that, but you're not doing it every week, you're not doing it every month, it's a special occasion kind of thing. So let's talk about all the fancy that we got. Oh, we made so fancy here. Yeah. So there's a lot of there's been a lot of upgrades um, since we moved in. One of the things that I found special about living here was walking into the house and having and really feeling like you were walking back in time. It felt like that. You had the old cook stove, and there was you know, it, I, mean, I guess we had plastic buckets, but really other than that, there was sort of no. You guys had like lanterns, kerosene lanterns and stuff when you first moved back here. Yeah. Part of it is is feels like just totally right because it's the necessity of um, you know what it takes to be able to live here for us so for example I have to have a fairly elaborate solar setup because I have to have power because I have to have the computer because I have to I have to log on so if I'm gonna have all that running these LED Christmas lights is like it costs it's nothing, free. right? It's free, yeah. right? So all of the lights that you see are are new in the last two years, and it's funny to me sometimes. I'll turn off all the lights, and I'll turn off the one single light that we used to have over in the corner over there, and just to just to realize. I mean, it wasn't even that long ago, right? It's not. We're not talking thirty years ago. We're talking like three years ago that this house that was like as bright as you could get it, you know. And it's it's crazy to to feel. That's one of those things where um, you don't. There's there's certain things about being here that are, that are really different than being on a, in a conventional house and lighting as funny as it sounds is one of the big ones where it's the winter and it's dark you know basically the sun rises at ten and sets at two and it's dark all the time and when you really can't make your house light you know you turn on the light and there's like this one little pool in the corner and everything else is still dark it really feels like winter is just forever and that, but you turn on these. Christmas lights, and even though the the lighting is still pretty mellow compared to a conventional house, it's like now we can see nice. and do the dishes. And there's been some upgrades like that, which which is it's a you know it's a push and pull for me because it's nice to have that, and at the same time it's it seems antithetical to the rustic. The, the rustic, yeah. I feel like I'm kind of caught making these the roughing it. Yeah. Got out here to rough it, honey. Yeah, we're out. We're smooth out here to it. Smooth it. Yeah. yeah. Who's cool is that? Rex. That's Rex. Yeah. Um, so anyway, so the, the track lighting up here is new. The Christmas lights that run around the house are new. This um, is my Christmas present last year. There used to be this, a cook stove literally right here. So that stove, believe it or that's not, new too. that's like a super fancy stove. That's like a $3,000 stove. Um, it's a It's got a catalytic reburner and it's like super fancy top of the line, like 89% efficient or something stupid. Well, yeah, the old cook stove, it would, when it backed up, it would get super smoky in here. And I was like, I have a two-month-old. I'm not bringing a two-month-old into a smoky, sooty environment, right? That's not what a good mom does. So, and, and you know, who wants to be cold? And this, this had been a pretty drafty, cold place to live. So the first week, the first time when we first moved out here, that was the, one, that was the first thing. The second thing was the washing machine. I needed a washing machine. And this this was just last year, and those are the probably the, for me the three biggest yeah the, the life changers like the, really was, life changers out here. The process of getting these things out here is is real, right? Like so, the old it, it's it's funny actually. So nothing that we've brought out is is bigger than the old cook stove. And then the old cook stove came out in 1982 on a dog sled. Yeah, and was dropped three times, and the fire brick was cracked, and you know is it a thing. But yeah bringing this thing out. It's actually, it's not as hard as you would think. It's just, it, it's, you got to put it on the snow machine, you strap it down and hope for the best and then like avoid all the trees basically is, is the process. It is a real deal when like, when you're thinking about what you're going to bring back, it's like, well, is that going to fit on the sled and how is that going to work? And it's, it's a totally... Well, and if you want it in June, you just have to wait until there's enough snow, which last year it wasn't until Christmas. Yeah, we had plans to buy this stove months before it actually came out here, right, Cause, cause, because of that. Um, and, yeah, waiting for the snow. Right, and there's, you know, the stove is one thing, like obviously I'm not going to put this 150 pound stove on my back, but but even just the stuff, we redid the counter last year, and just these these 2x12s, like, Heavy I guess I probably could have made an extra trip and brought the 2x12s, but really it's the kind of thing that you do when it snows. So you, you definitely like plan life based on the weather, which is kind of cool. You know, the trail is 
is miles and it is not passable on an ATV. It's a footpath. It's like a game trail and it goes... The reason is we can't have ATV is because it goes over creeks and over sloughs and over tundra, which is pretty tough terrain to um, put any kind of trail and walking is difficult. So not only are you walking so far, but you, you know, carrying all of your produce in the summer, um, you don't want to have any extra weight to that. So if you're already, and Kai is not getting any lighter, you know, I think he's like 35 pounds now. So and then you add all your groceries to that and you each, we each have a pack. And that's the problem with this. I can't do a pack anymore. So this summer it's been lean bringing stuff in and sending Chris out on solo missions. And so I really don't get into town. When you ask that question, I'm like, into town? I can't remember the last time I saw other people, <laughs> you know, which is a weird thing to say, right? We're in some ways so connected, having the internet access back here. In other ways, it's just yeah. the human contact, like the actual physical contact is... Um, That's one of the things I think about all the time. Like, so I have instantaneous feedback. When this house was built in 1982, Rick walked out here and there was no cell phone, there was no internet, there was no anything. There was right? radio there, and he... No, no, there wasn't when he got back here. I mean, there there was the radio, like the FM radio. Yeah. Um, but, but he, you know, would walk out to the post office, get a letter, walk back, be here for a month and then send that letter and then it would take two weeks to get there. It was like the, the communication Slow. cycle was so different, right? And now it's just like everything's happening and it feels so 21st century to me, as funny as that sounds to be out here and just have all that communication running back and forth. And it's such a different vibe than it ever used to be. It is weird because in some ways it's a total throwback, you know, without the running water and being on our own electric system and whatever. Yeah, that's all old, but in other ways, it's, it's the same as anywhere else. So this is our, um, I'm going to say sink. And it's funny, the other day I asked Kai to bring a dish to the sink. He's like, where's the sink? I'm like, oh, the dish pan. It's, a, it's a, you know, here's our dirty dishes. You know, I'll heat up whatever was the biggest pan that I cooked in. You know, put the water on there and I'll wash the dishes, dry the dishes, put them away. Which is totally normal, except... For, you know, people talk about dishwashers are so water efficient and it's so ironic that we have more water than we could ever use up here. And at the same time, because we're hauling it by hand, we use so little. This is our um, our dump bucket and it's a five gallon bucket. That's where all of our, you know, vegetable peelings, the, compost, the drain, the drain. Exactly. So I know that when I do dishes, I use less than five gallons of water. By a lot. By a like, lot. Like a, you might use yeah. half a gallon. So people make this argument like, oh, the dishwasher saves so much water. I'm like, yeah, but you could do dishes with less water. Hand washing is another thing that just gets difficult with the two you're going to wash with hands. You, you know, soap up his hands and make him hold them over the bucket and you're rinsing them just with a little cup you know, of water. Oh, this is vintage. This is our hand washing cup. Pillsbury Doughboy. Pillsbury Doughboy, man. <laughs> just 35 years this old. This is an antique, I'm sure, but we use it every day, every day. So here's our washer. Um, how it's, it's an awesome dryer. It's like large capacity, which is great because we only do about one load a week. Two if it rains and we have the extra water. But on the back side here, we have two large like Rubbermaid tubs. One full of water for our intake and one for our discharge. So basically we just drop the hoses in the tub sucks it up, washes, and you know, rinses, spits it back out. And then that water we actually haul out by hand, dump it out in the yard, um, biodegradable soap, because it's, it's interesting, we always worry about contaminating our spring because that is our only drinking water source. It's the reason why we hike our water over here and dump it, so that's on the drainage back away from the spring. Same reason why we don't ever move our outhouse, because who wants to contaminate, you know, you never, you don't really, we don't really know what the drainage system is like down there. We don't want to contaminate it because that is what really keeps us alive out here. Yeah, the spring is. Absolutely. It's amazing. It's a magical spring. Yeah. 40 below, it's still running. Um, summertime, 80 degrees out, it's still like 33 degrees. The summer, the summer before my first year in college, um, Rick and I decided we were going to finish the room that was started in 1993. I graduated from high school in 98, so it was five years, I guess. It sounds not as long as it felt, but um, this was going to be my little brother's room, um, except by the time it actually got finished, he was not living here anymore. When we go look at the little cabin, we'll talk about it, but um, we ended up 
pulling out all of this shit from the little cabin, and this has turned into kind of like the pantry. It's, it's Kai's bathroom. It's 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 like random stuff. There's a lot that's been going on between getting ourselves up here and having you know being pregnant and having Kai be two years old and just trying to like and you're fix, working full time. Yeah, working full time and trying to arrest the decay. Like I've rebuilt the sauna, the outhouse, the little cabin, the front porch and we rebuilt that place in the last three years. There's a lot that still needs to get done. There's no architectural design. There's no building code. No one's no, coming out here to check us. It's definitely not to code. <laughs> not to code. It's not five star energy rated, but, but whatever you want to do, dream big, right? Whatever you want to do, whatever you can do, you, you can do it, which is really fun. And I swear if I, if I didn't have kids and I could just do projects all the time, oh, happy as a clam. You know, it's, it's, it is super fun, and it's cool when you look at the wood and you're like, I remember that tree as a tree, and I remember peeling that tree, and I remember, you know, I didn't spike it in, but I remember Christopher spiking that in. <laughs> but it's, it's really a cool feeling, especially, I love going over to our guest cabin because, like, we built that. We, from the ground up, we picked the spot, we did everything. Frankly, this bookshelf is not really ideal, let's be honest. Um, yeah, stuff tends to fall off of it when the door closes. But because you have to slam the door to get it to close. Yeah, but Rick built this bookshelf. He built the chairs. 37 years ago. Built the table. It hasn't moved. <laughs> Neither have the books. <laughs> no. If you look at the top of them, you can tell. <laughs> the fact that we have encyclopedias. Right, yeah, we even have Even though the, we have the we, whole internet. I, I told Forrest that we need to get rid of these because we have all the information in the world in our pocket. Forrest really likes to look stuff up in books. P is just a case the internet fails, we'll still know stuff. <laughs> from what, from 1982? Yeah, uh, <laughs> no, those are 76. Forrest was born out here. Um, Forrest, was, Forrest is 10 years younger than I am. Um, so there's three of us brothers that, that grew up out here, um, Forrest being the youngest. Forrest was born in 1990, uh, there. about 15 feet that direction. Um, he was born two weeks early before the midwife got here, so my mom was out here on her own. Uh, with, Can't even imagine. With Rick. <laughs> um, it all, all worked out, I guess. Yep, he did not die, if you recall. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he did not die, and she did not die, um, although it was Good thing Crazy that times. nothing too complicated happened. Wait, Forrest, so Forrest has kind of followed in Rick's footsteps and... Um, that's a book here? That's his, that's his book. So Forrest has written his book. Rick wrote a book about getting... Rick wrote two books actually here uh, about, uh, about what it's like to be out here and kind of the story of getting here and that whole deal. Um, so we've got two authors in the family so we have a lot of books and even though like I said, I'm a, I'm a total Philistine and happy on YouTube. We have, we have books, so maybe Kyle will read. <laughs> you be a crazy kind of kid yeah. that reads books. Yeah, I, I can't. Might not play video games. It's going to be a real weirdo. <laughs> so the, the table. table was Michelle's dream. Yeah. The black lacquer. Rick, Rick so that yeah, this, this is worth talking about. So Rick, Rick came out here in 1982 from Chicago with oh, a Manhattan. Yeah, no, you're right. From Manhattan, growing up in Chicago, from Manhattan, with with a, a couple dreams, and there, I mean, a dream, and there was a couple of items in the dream that were just like touch points. And one of the things was we're gonna have a black lacquer table, right? It was like 1982. She wanted she wanted pink and gray cups with black lacquer. That's so 80s, right? Yeah. And we still have the stuff. It's like right. Yeah. So these these cups were brought out here probably uh, in a backpack in 1982, and they've been out here ever since. This is the black lacquer table that, that that probably did not sort of come out as imagined. Yeah, it's pretty rough. I don't know if you'll pick this up on the camera, but it's the lacquer is pitted, the seams are cracked, and it's so low on the priority of things to get fixed and changed. And it, everything's sentimental, like we've been saying. Like every time you pick up a thing or look at a thing, like oh. You know, we don't, you know, remember that story? Um, like the post over here is a good example. Yeah, They're, let's look at the posts. The posts are pretty cool. I love looking at the posts because yeah, so they are, measure the heights of the boys. This is, this is brother one. This is me, brother two. Brother three is on the other side. So that's the three brothers growing up from my first mark is right here in 87. 
And Kai's down here. Yeah. His first mark when he was two months old. Is um, this is Uncle Ka's first mark in 85. Forrest's first mark is like down here in 1990. And then this is my son is down here. First mark in 2015. And I just think that's rad. These posts are like history. Um, They're really fun. So it's cool. It's cool. I was, I was that, I was that tall when I got here. <laughs> I keep, we've done a bunch of these building projects and you do the building in the summer because that's when it's happening. And inevitably you brought in 90% 90, 90 of the lumber that you needed, right? Which is not minor, you know, to go get, to figure out like the building project is happening. It's not like you're going to wait until the winter time. So you got to go bring that in your back and you probably forgot a window or two, which is kind of mind blowing, right? You should be able to calculate that beforehand. But anyway, so we brought this window in. In the summer. This is in the summer. So, I, yeah, so, I'm so carried, this is carried in. On carried in and on my back. I've done the trail. I'm exhausted. I'm feeling pretty good. Finally got the window in. I, I pull my backpack off, lay right it on by the floor, the and I just hear. <laughs> <laughs> so there's, so it's a double pane glass window. Amanda did this cool, like. Cover up job. Yeah, but if, if you ch check it out, that's. Duct tape on the That's back side of it. on the back side, right? Um, and someday, maybe we'll replace it, but really, probably, but really, probably like, won't. It's one of those things, like, everything, it works just good enough. Yeah. Like, it, you know, and it'll be the kind of thing that we won't replace, and then Kyle will be like, oh, but my mom did that painting. Well, let's just leave it. You know, stuff like or, that. Or that that's half of, half the time. It's like, oh, my mom did that painting. I don't want to move it. The other half the time is like, what the what is the matter with these guys? This, like, really? This window's been broken for 35 years and these guys couldn't bother to be freaking bring out another window? What the hell is the matter with these people? Which is, like I said, half the time I walk around here, I'm like, oh man, that black lacquer table, that thing is 35 years old. There's a lot of stories, a lot of good times around that table. And the other half of the time, I'm just like, how come I've got black visqueen sitting on my ceiling? <laughs> Maybe we should fix that. Kind of like the couch that's vintage, man. That couch was brought out here. It, yeah early 80s and you could and it was bought used because Rick did not have a lot of money so he got that thing used and it's been here since the 80s and Christian we were just talking about this like when did you first start putting this together there's like nails holding that thing up nails upon nails upon nails I remember being 12 years old the the arm on the couch was broken like you could lean against it and just kind of fall over and I remember coming in here with a, a hammer and an eight penny nail and just banging it in and that was in 1992 <laughs> So we'll Love look. that couch. Yeah. A lot of good memories. <laughs> we'll replace that couch someday. I don't even want to now that the dog's here. Like the dog sleeps there. It's perfect for him. If you had a new couch, you'd have to kick the dog off. It, it all works out. This is the upstairs of the house. It's a um, an unfortunate design. <laughs> um, we've got these these three dormer windows that face north, and then these big ridge poles that run down. So you have to duck under at the bottom, and of course we've got bookshelves and crap, so you can't actually walk through in the middle where you wouldn't have to duck under. So we spent a lot of time ducking under. But this is this is the power area. It's also a total embarrassment. I just want to say for the record, this is like not my not my best work. Charge controller, two inverters. This bigger one is for the washing machine, which is their only real load. Um, this is basically for my computer lights. I, I, there's not much in terms of load. It's basically my computer, the satellite dish, the washing or the yeah the washing machine every once in a while, and the lights, which are all LED and, and don't use much. So um, the batteries are under here. We've got just I think it's it's we've got two 400 amp hours six six volt batteries. So we've got 12 volts at 400 amp hours. Um, there's uh, I want to say 750 watts of solar outside. The interesting thing about the solar is we have way too much all year until about, I would say, like the middle of October to, towards the 1st of November. And then like October 15th, somewhere between October 15th and November 1st, it's like now there's nothing at all. So you could quadruple the array and, and nothing times four is still nothing, right? So it's kind of funny that way. So we run the generator um, every couple days um, from about November through February. But other, other than November through February, we're totally on our own. We've just got a little Honda E2000. Um, just, it just, this is an inverter charger. I run it for about three hours uh, every other day, and that's enough. So we've got the, the blackout shades that we'll take off here pretty soon, actually. But, um, yeah. you know, from, I want to say... Mm, April? April. 
April through about October. the end of, yeah. o- end of August, yeah. beginning of September. It's like, you kind of If you want to sleep helps, well. Because you've got nothing but sun. Well, with well, Rick a Rick, writer and Rick Forrest was an writer author, and... yeah, and Forrest is an author. I, my family is very cerebral. I just, I just watch videos. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, we don't have TV, and uh, books are great. Um, we've got a lot of them out here, and because, you know, um, and not all of them are the best, <laughs> but whatever. Yeah. Um, I'm looking forward to when Kai can read a little, when we can read to him, you know, those classic you know, books, it'd be fun. Yeah. Reading it, Rick's book to him will be a trip. That'll be really I'm fun. I'm excited about that. Little idea. Tree, will be awesome. Oh, yeah. This is my I office. I built that for Krista. Oh, because I, I just couldn't stand the idea of a, a regular office chair being out here, even though it would be more comfortable. And if you told me you needed it, I would totally let you, but this looks so much better than a swivelly office chair. <laughs> so it's, it's not the Herman Miller Aeron chair. No, it's not. But no. but I really, I, I like making the stuff. And this birch. So we cut down birch for firewood, right? Um, and as long as the wood is green, you can bend it and uh, just cut it to fit and nail it together. It's really fun. Um, that's another one of those things like, oh, I can make furniture. Uh, so yeah, I made this chair. I made Kai's high chair, little end tables. I have big dreams of, um, I don't making coffee table for the guest cabin and uh, a few other things, like the basket and stuff that's over there. So I'm a software developer. I do a lot of, I write code. I've got my, my split screens. And I want you to make sure that you capture this. This is where I get all my really good ideas. <clears throat> so I, I do a lot of a lot of big thinking up here, and um, that's kind of what I'm working on right now. So feel yeah. feel pretty good about it. This is this is where I spend 40 hours a week or so. It's amazing. Yeah. It's it's a really weird feeling. It's the weirdest dichotomy in the world when when I close that. Uh, it's like it's San it's Diego. a it's a moment that happens, right? It's like San Diego stops, boom. Now I'm in the wilderness, right? It's like this bizarre feeling, and it's really cool. Um, mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, I wander downstairs, and I'm in this like kind of like primal deal where I've got my pregnant wife and my two year old son in this log cabin in the wilderness, versus you know, like I said, Twitter and internet and JavaScript and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it is different for me. It's, it's interesting that your life is so much different out here than mine, just just because he's going to work. Yeah. Um, I feel like there'll be days where I literally don't talk to anyone except for these two. Um, more than days. Like, it's a, it's been like a week. You know, because that guy keeps me busy. Like, having a phone call where you're like, hold on, hold on, hold on. And you got your kid and you've got dinner and you only have two hands. Your cell phones are not made for this. Just the fact that you're talking about phones, though, is like, it, that's a whole new reality yeah. out here. Right? Yeah, um, for sure. That's that's fancy pants for us. And that's actually new in the last two years, too. We didn't have cell phones that worked out here, but we've found okay. the right provider and we got the cell phone booster. And it's like, like I said, it's, yeah. it's this weird, it's not 100 years ago. You can't pretend it's 100 years ago. This is where the magic happens. <laughs> Like I said, I've got about 800 watts of solar, so there's a lot of black back here. I'd love to move it off the porch, but um, I feel really guilty when I start thinking about cutting down the trees. So the, the panels need to be up as high as possible and facing south. So I'm up and I'm south, and I've got a clearing right here. So if I was going to like put them in the yard or something, they'd be way farther down, and I'd have to start cutting down trees. So right, right now they're in the back porch. Yeah, well, it's, our it's, back porch has other improvements that yeah, probably should be dealt with first. There's a lot of stuff that's going on, a lot of ins, a lot of outs. <laughs> I'm going to redo the back porch. These will go. But for now, um, this is this is my um, poor man's solar array, uh, yeah. well, which is to say our, they're um, leaning up against the side of that one. Dish. It's so ugly. This is but, crazy shit, dude. This is real right here. We got ones and zeros that are streaming out from here into outer space down to San Diego, back out here to the Alaskan wilderness, and, and that's how I'm making money. That's crazy. I, I can't believe that's happening. But that's real, dude. That's that's real. And it's strapped to the side of this log cabin that was built in 1982, and yes. when, when this place was nowhere. And it's, it's still, still nowhere. nowhere. <laughs> still nowhere. We got the cell antenna back there, which is, like I said, that's a new reality, too. People call the phone rings. It's wild. <laughs> it's pretty wild. On this rug. This rug is hilarious. Can we tell the story about this rug? This is a nice rug. Like for the ridge line, it's really fancy. 
apparently Rick had gone to town, so he would go on binge um, money making spree. So he was a, a, a taxi driver or something, whatever. Found a guy's wallet, <laughs> and this was back when credit cards were like brand new. So he went and bought this rug, and then returned the guy's wallet to him. <laughs> what? Well, he found the guy's wallet, bought the rug on the guy's credit card, and then returned it to the guy's wallet. <laughs> So anyway, it's there, that's our stolen rug. It's hot. <laughs> it's a hot rug. It's a hot rug. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's the only way that, that... That's probably one of the fanciest things out here. The story is, for me is how he did this with no money. Like, I'm doing this with money, right? Like, I have a good job. I have a real job where I make real money. And Rick was out here for real broke, like extra special broke, um, and, and did all this. And that's just a different way to think about it for me. It's It's interesting, you know, like... The dichotomy between what I'm doing and what he's doing is really interesting to me. Yeah. And I just feel like we're just... Che out, we're cheating. Yeah, we're totally is, cheating. We're Modern just, technology and we a, money. We've got a washing machine and batteries. It's like you you said uh, earlier on the hike and standing on the shoulders of giants. Totally. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, so, the fact that you get here and you can come inside and warm up. Like, he got back here and it was 40 below and... Yeah, cool. And what? I mean, we've done a <laughs> yeah. lot of work just to insulate the house. Yeah, we have. We've done a lot. Anyway, that's awesome. Probably, that's probably more than you need for a 600 square foot. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you guys. I appreciate it.